And the book of Exodus is very clear. Jesus says, the word says this. It says, don't have any false gods before me. And then he says this, for I am a jealous God. Right? He says, my name is jealous, and I am jealous for my church. That's why he says this. So when we are joined, right, to the, to the world, God is saying, no, 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 no. You belong to me. That's what he's saying. That's exactly what he's saying. You belong to me. So because you joined, now I got to come in as a husband and wash my wife. He said, no, 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 we're going to take care of this. We're going to remove this out. We're going to take care of this, and I'm going to cleanse you with my word. So that's why when he says I'm coming with a sharp two-edged sword, it's not coming to destroy or kill the church. He's coming to heal the church. And he's coming in to remove whatever it is that's affecting the church. Because let me tell you something. I don't know if you ever had an infection on your feet or on your arm. And, you know, they come in there. They got to they gotta do something. They got to give you a shot. They got to clear it up. They got to clean it out. Remove whatever it is. Put some band in. And then that way you become cured and healed. Well, guess what? Well, if your body, your physical body gets infected, then the body of Christ needs surgery too. So if there's an attachment of some sort, you better believe that the Spirit of God is going to come in and say, no, 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 this is not what I want. And it's for your sake, it's for our sake, it's for our good that Jesus comes in and performs what he says, right? That's the word, comes in to remove and disinfect and cleanse his bride. That's why Ephesians says that I come to wash my bride with my word so that I can present her to myself. Not no one else, right? He doesn't want his bride joined to no one else. He wants to join to him. You get it? This is why he's coming in the way he's coming in. He's coming in to do the cleansing and the washing, and he says, I'm coming because I'm going to wash you with my word because I'm your husband and you're my wife, and I'm going to cleanse you from the worldly stuff that's contaminated you all this time. That's why he says to them, that's why he was angry. That's why he was all, like, aroused. He says, you're worshiping false idols, you're, you're sexually immoral, but on top of that, now you're joined. And that's where things get, pro- there's a problem there. It says we're not to be joined to the world. The church should not be joined to the world. We love the world. We love them, we'll, we'll, we'll win them over for Christ, but we're not to be like the world. We're to be joined to Christ, amen? Amen. So, hay tres cosas aquí que el pastor estaba mencionando. Es que no solamente la iglesia de Pérgamo estaba adorando ídolos, pero también estaba cometiendo inmoralidad sexual. Pero el punto más importante que el, que el pastor mencionaba es que se habían mezclado, se habían juntado. Entonces, en, el pastor decía que en, la, en Éxodo la palabra dice que el Señor es un Dios celoso y que no debería haber otro Dios antes que Él. O sea, que a la iglesia de Pérgamo, estar adorando a los dioses, mezclándose, haciendo inmoralidad sexual, pero también juntándose a eso, ahí es donde vino la ira del Señor. O sea, el Señor dice que eh, él, por eso vino con una espada de doble filo, para remover y quitar esa mezcla entre su iglesia y el mundo no fuimos llamados a juntarnos al mundo aunque amemos al mundo amemos a la gente que está en el mundo o sea es normal como cuando uno tiene una infección en el cuerpo uno va al doctor vienen te limpian te quitan la infección te ponen un, una cura y ahí eres purificado so, entonces es lo mismo con este concepto el señor viene con esa espada de doble filo quita la conexión no solamente del cuerpo, pero también del espíritu. Te limpia y ahí es cuando viene el Señor y te presenta limpio delante de él. Praise God. Thank you, Jody. Praise the Lord. But then off the, off the hook yet, he's got another problem with the church of Pergamos. Pero ese no, no era el único problema que tenía la iglesia de Pergamo. Right? And they hold to another kind of doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Pero también tenían la doctrina de los Nicolaitas. Now, we discussed this before. Habíamos discutido esto antes. And if you remember, in the church of Ephesus, they practiced the deeds of the Nicolaitans. But now Jesus is saying, you hold fast to the doctrine. So you have deeds, and now you have a doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Si ustedes se acuerdan cuando estudiamos eh, que la iglesia de Éfesos estaba practicando eh, lo, las cosas de los Nicolaitas aquí en eh, la iglesia de Pérgamo tiene otro problema 
ellos están tolerando y también sostienen la doctrina de los Nicolaitas. Amen. And so what this now is doing is they were practicing. Now, we talked a little bit about the, the origin, if you would, in the book of Acts. Uh, there's, there's a story where there's a problem uh, with the serving of the tables, and there was a certain sect of people who felt that they were being overlooked. And so they told them, they said, listen, pick seven men of good rapport and good character, filled with the Holy Spirit, and that they could tend to tables because it is good for us to then turn to the Word of God. And out of those, there was, a, there was a man named Nicholas. He was part of that group. And so he was, the Bible says he was a proselyte and he was a citizen of Antioch. It's okay. You all right? Yeah. All right. So this is why now he's saying because Nic Nicolai in, in, uh, was a citizen of Greece, right, which we all know the history of Greece. It's a very liberal, very liberal. And Nicholas was part of that. And so what happened here is that now this deed is now being taught. They're saying, hey, you know what? You can walk in the spirit, but you can do whatever you want in the flesh. And that's not the way it works. You cannot walk in the spirit and then do whatever you want in your body and then think that it's okay. And this is what they were teaching. This is the doctrine that they were saying, hey, this, it's fine. You can go to church. You can worship the Lord, but you can still sleep around if all you want. You can do that all you want. And God said, no, 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 that doesn't work that way. You belong to me. Your spirit belongs to me and what? Your body belongs to me. And the, these are the Nicolaitans was teaching this because they wanted to overcome the people. And this is exactly what they were doing, right? It was men seeking lordship over the people of God. And this is important because when men seek lordship over the people of God because they want to rule the people of God using their own doctrine, not the doctrine of God. See, pastors should not want to rule over people, shepherd people, love people, lead them to Christ, not rule. Let's say, I, I don't rule over you, okay? God rules over you. He's the ruler of heaven and earth, right? We're called to shepherd. We're called to, to teach the flock, to teach the flock, to shepherd the flock, not to rule the flock. But this doctrine was called to overtake the men, overtake the children, the people of God, and they were seeking their lordship. They said, listen, you're going to do it this way, and we're going to lord over you because this is what we're going to do. And this is a doctrine that, that Jesus hates. He hates this. He hates when his people are being bullied by this particular doctrine because God will never bully you. He won't force you to do something. He won't demand you to do something, right? Because then what's the point? He wants you to love him free, freely. He wants you to serve him freely. He wants to give to him freely, out of a free heart, out of, out of a free will, right? Anything done out of uh, compulsion or being forced, that's not God because that's not the way God works. And this is exactly what the, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans was trying to do. They wanted to lord the people with this kind of doctrine and say, hey, you can live like the world and still serve the Lord. And it doesn't work that way. El pastor mencionaba como cuando estábamos estudiando la iglesia de Éfesos, mencionaba que eh, el término Nicolaita venía eh, acerca de un hombre que se llamaba Nicolás, que él era griego. Y menciona el pastor que el problema que tenían ellos es que ellos buscaban el señorío, por, eh, a, señorear a la gente. Pero lo, lo que el señor está diciendo es que él no busca que nosotros tengamos el señorío de la gente, sino que como pastores vengamos y traigamos a, a la gente con amor hacia el Señor. Y ese era el problema que, que menciona aquí, porque el Señor no busca que lo amemos a Él o ninguna de esas cosas por causa de una compulsión o causa de manipulación, sino que sea el amor libre, un amor con libre albedrío, tu decisión de amarlo a él, buscarlo a él y honrarlo a él. Y por eso era el problema que el Señor tenía con esa doctrina de los nicolaitas, porque iba en contra de lo que decía el Señor. Decía, tú puedes estar en el mundo y también puedes servir al Señor así, tra eh, trayendo esas doctrinas. O sea, puedes ser parte del mundo y parte del reino. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And here's why, this is why doctrine is so important to the Lord. 
Y por eso es que la doctrina es tan importante para el Señor. Right? He tells them you hold to the doctrine of Baal and you hold to the doctrine of Balaam, about the doctrine of, of the Nicolaitans. Dice que no solamente eh, se sostenían la doctrina de los Nicolaitas, sino también de Balaam. But look what it says here in Proverbs 4, not, it's not part of your notes, but Proverbs 4, 1 through 4. En Proverbios 4. Proverbs 4, 1 through 4. Del 1 al 4. Sister Jackie. It says this, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. And then in verse 2 it says this, For I give you good doctrine. And that's what he gives us, good doctrine. Not the doctrine of Balaam, not the doctrine of Nicolaitans, it's the doctrine of the Lord, the doctrine of God. Right? He says, I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law, my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. That's a pretty good proposition. Amen? When somebody tells you, listen, if you do this, man, you're going to live. If you love, if you do serve me and, and you love me and you keep the commandments in my heart, well, how we do that is through Christ. Right? We do it through Christ because he enables us through his Holy Spirit to live for him. Right? Even though we can't do it our own selves. Jesus did it for us. Amen? Amen. So he says, I give you good doctrine. Say, I give you good doctrine. Good doctrine. Amen. Go ahead. So cuando vamos al libro de Proverbios capítulo 4, versículo del 1 al 4, dice así. Escuchen, hijos, la corrección de un padre. Dispóngase a adquirir entendimiento. Y les brindo buenas enseñanzas, así que no abandonen mi instrucción. Yo también fui hijo de mi padre. Era el niño consentido de mi madre. Mi padre me instruyó de esta manera. Aférrate de corazón a mis palabras, obedece mis mandamientos y vivirás. El pastor mencionaba como es una buena propuesta que el Señor te diga, ven, sírveme, sigue mis mandamientos, sigue mi buena doctrina y vivirás. Amen. Then here, in verse 17, we're going to come to a close. It says, he who has an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Listen, God works with his Holy Spirit. He gives us the word, and we hear the word of the Lord by the Holy Spirit. Then he goes on and says this, To him who overcomes, remember, we're overcomers, right? Because he overcame the world. So we are overcomers. It says, To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. And I will give him a white stone, and on the stone... A new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. El versículo 17 de Apocalipsis capítulo 2 dice, El que tenga oídos, que oiga que el, lo que el Espíritu dice a las iglesias. Al que salga vencedor, le daré del maná escondido y le daré también una piedrecita blanca en la que está escrito un nombre nuevo que solo conoce quien la recibe. Eh, el pastor estaba diciendo como que nosotros somos más que vencedores porque el Señor venció. Amen. Notice here, it says here towards the latter part of this. He says, I will give you a new, you know why we get a new name? Because you become unrec unrecognizable. God cleanses you up, he cleans you up. You become a new creature in him. People say, oh, yeah, I don't know, who, who's this guy? Well, God is giving you a new name. You're not the way you used to be. God not only changes you, washes you, cleanses you, but he's going to give you a brand new name. He says, here you go. And it's a name that no one knows. Amen? The world gives you a lot of names. <laughs> we would call a lot of names in the world. But God says, I'm giving you a new name, a new name, and I'm giving you that no one knows. And that's who you're going to be. Amen? Es poderoso porque eh, en, cuando estamos llegando a la parte final de este versículo, dice que nos dará un nuevo nombre. O sea, que no solamente viene el Señor, te limpia, hace la cirugía y te transforma, sino que también te da un nuevo nombre. El mundo se pasa dándole, dándonos nombre constantemente. Pero el Señor dice, yo te voy a dar un nombre que ni tú mismo te vas a reconocer, que ninguno de los que está a tu alrededor va a reconocer por lo que Él ha hecho en ti. 
So, no solamente te limpia, te restaura, te purifica, pero te pone un nuevo nombre que cambia quien tú eres. Amen. We're going to close with this. What's this hidden manna, right? What is this hidden manna? Y vamos a cerrar con esto. ¿Y qué es ese maná escondido? You know, the hidden manna is a sign of God's generosity towards us and is God's presence, right? It also points to Jesus coming to save us, right? And also to give us a new life. This is a hidden manna. Interesting that it's hidden because it's hidden out of the sight of the enemy. It's only for you. God gives you the hidden manna that comes from him. No one's going to take that manna, right? Look what it says here. I'm closing with this. John 6. I'm going to read from verse 30 to 32 and 33. It says, Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? Notice that they need a sign, right? Everybody wants a sign, right? Then it says here, What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then verse 32, Jesus says this, Most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. Verse 33, For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to what? The world. He gives life to the world. The church has the life. The world doesn't. This is why he comes to the world. This is how compassionate and how merciful God is. And he comes and says, I've come to give life to the world because they're dead. They're dying. They're dead. But he says, but you have hope in me. So I'm giving you that manna that only comes from heaven. Amen. ¿Y qué es ese maná escondido? El maná escondido representa una señal de la generosidad del Señor. Y también es la presencia del Señor en nuestra vida. Y también apunta para hacia el Señor viniendo para salvarnos y para darnos una nueva vida y cuando vamos al libro de Juan capítulo 6 versículo 30 al 33 dice y qué señal milagrosa harás para que la veamos y te creamos qué puedes hacer insistieron ellos nuestros antepasados comieron el maná en el desierto como está escrito pan del cielo les doy les dio a comer les aseguro que no fue Moisés el que les dio a ustedes el pan del cielo afirmó Jesús el que da el verdadero pan del cielo es mi padre el pan de Dios es el que baja del cielo y da vida al mundo o sea que la, el mundo no es el que te da vida a ti el que te da la vida es el Señor y por eso ese, ese maná del cual el Señor está hablando aquí solo nos los he revelado a nosotros cuando venimos al Padre y es algo que el mundo no nos puede quitar nadie nos puede quitar sino que es un tesoro que por medio de la generosidad del Padre se nos fue entregado they said this is verse 34 and 35 I'm going read this Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread. Give us this bread always. Right? They wanted this bread, right? They couldn't turn it down. Jesus says this, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. He who comes to me will never, hurt, never hunger, and that he who believes in me will never thirst. This is the hidden manner that we get. This is why people look at us and say, why do you still go to church, man? I mean, I, I see you, some challenge in your life, man. You're still going to church. I have a hidden manner. That's why. I saw you, man. You, you, you were almost down and out. I thought you were going to throw in a towel, you know? I got the hidden manner. <laughs> That's why. You know, I, I don't depend on my job. and I don't depend on things around me. I have a secret provision. That provision is the Lord. Even when things don't go right in your life, you still got that, that provision, that hidden manna that comes down. That's what he says. He says, if you come to me, you would never hunger. And you believe in me, 
you'll never thirst. Right? This is why people of God, listen, there's, there's, there's things that people go through that you don't even know. I'm pretty sure you're going through some things right now. Let's be honest. But always, go, but always stay connected to the Lord. He is a secret manna. And he will always provide. Always provide for you. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Let's be close. Y el versículo 34 al 35 leía, Señor, le pidieron, danos siempre ese pan. Yo soy el pan de vida, declaró Jesús. El que a mí viene nunca pasará hambre, y el que en mí cree nunca más volverá a tener sed. Aquí vemos como ellos se quedaron con esa gana, que querían ese pan del Señor. Y es lo mismo con nosotros. Hay mucha gente que viene a donde nosotros y nos dicen, tú estabas pasando por una situación tan difícil, ¿cómo no, no has tirado la toalla? Se preguntan el, el por qué, como tu mundo se derrumba delante de ti. Ahí estás tú aferrándote al Señor. Es por ese maná secreto que tenemos de parte del Padre. Es porque tenemos al Espíritu Santo como ese maná secreto que nos da la provisión, que nos da lo que necesitamos para ser sustentados. Jamás tendremos hambre, jamás tendremos sed. Y podemos estar ciertos que, que aunque todo se acabe a nuestro alrededor, Ahí está ese maná secreto a nuestro lado. Así que mientras tú te mantengas firme, puedes estar seguro en él. Quiero abrir el altar en esta mañana, en esta tarde. If you say, you know, Lord, I need to come to you. I never had an experience with you. I never, I don't even know you. I want to open up this altar for those who never received Jesus Christ in your life. En este momento quiero abrir este altar para todo aquel que ha dicho, Señor, yo no he tenido una experiencia contigo. Yo no he tenido esa oportunidad de conocerte de cerca. Así que está este altar abierto para poder recibir de semana secreto del cual el pastor hablaba. Amen. If that's you, if you want to come up and si ese eres tú, Receive the Lord as your bread of life. Ven Amen. al altar y recibe al Señor como ese pan de vida. Amen. I want you to invite, I want to invite you up today. Quiero invitarte en esta tarde. Amen. I also want to open up the altar as well for those who need to be reminded. It says, Lord, forgive me. I need to be reminded that you are the bread of life. My Amen. hidden manna is in you, not in anything else. También quiero abrir el altar para todo aquel que necesita un recordatorio de que el pan de vida el maná secreto está en él Amen Praise the Lord Praise the Lord Praise God Come on We all receive the hidden pra manna Praise God That's good Amen Amen God receive that come up I want to pray for you I want to pray for God Mesita she's having surgery this Friday It's interesting that we spoke about the Lord being a, an operator. He just comes in and does the work. So I'm going to ask Pastor Alvin and Pastor Freddy to join me here as well. And those who are there, just extend your hand this way. I'm going to pray. I'm going to have some oil if we can. Thank you, Lord, for your word, oh God, first. Lord, with nothing, we have nothing without you. We have nothing without your word, oh God. Your word that comes into our hearts and into our minds and removes, oh God, the infected parts of our hearts and removes the infected parts in our spirit. Lord, you come in, you do the work, oh God. You come in with your word and you cleanse us, oh God. You wash us, oh God. And you make us whole, you make us new, you make us clean by your word. Today, oh God, we want to lift up Carmencita to you. We ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you, oh God, though she is getting surgery, oh God, you are the one performing the surgery. You are the one that will guide the hands of the men and the women that are going to perform this surgery. When they perform this surgery, the word will go in. 
the sharp two-edged sword will go in and will begin to eradicate, oh God, whatever it is, oh God, and begin the healing process that God may see this body. So we pray and we thank you, oh God. We also want to lift up Julia, oh God, to you as well, who's also going, oh God, to surgery. Lord, we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you, oh God, will perform this surgery, oh God, because you're the one who put us together, oh God. And we thank you, Lord. So we pray peace upon God and oh Father God, let her be at peace. Let her mind, oh God, be stayed on you because you keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. So we pray and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. So we thank you, Lord. This moment we want to partake in uh, communion. If you are in need, let's raise your hands. We're going to present uh, the communion. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, O oh God, because you're merciful, you're patient, you're loving, filled with compassion, O oh God. Though you are not willing to see the wicked perish, you're not willing to see those go away, O oh God, without the opportunity to come to you. So we thank you, O oh Father God, that we, O oh God, can stand here, O oh God, by the grace of God and by the grace that is given to us by the blood of Jesus, O oh Lord, that washes our sins clean, that washes us away, O oh Father God, all unrighteousness, O oh Lord. So we thank you, O oh God, for your word. We thank you, O oh God, for your spirit. We thank you, O oh God, because you, O oh God, died for us. And not only did you die for us, O oh God, you rose from the grave and you conquered death, but you also, O oh God, by your word, cleanse us, O oh God and heal us, O oh God, of anything, O oh God, that infects us, that infects the body of Christ, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, because we can depend on you, O oh God, by your Spirit, O oh God, by your Holy Spirit, we thank you, O oh God. So in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you because your word works in our hearts, in our minds, O oh God. It gives us life. It gives us healing. It gives us a purpose, and it gives us a future in you. Lord, we are not cut off. We are added to you, O oh Father God. We've been adopted, O oh God, into your kingdom, O oh God. A people that was once cut off, O oh God, now added to you by your grace and by your mercy, Lord. And so we thank you, Lord, today. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Te damos gracias, Espíritu Santo, Padre, porque podemos venir delante de ti, Señor. Podemos venir delante de ti, Padre, aun cuando somos inmerecedores, Jehová. Padre, te damos gracias, Señor, porque aunque alguna vez fuimos parte del mundo, Señor, tú nos adoptaste, Señor. Tú nos llamaste hijos. Tú nos llamaste, Padre, para ser coherederos contigo, Jehová. Padre, te damos gracias por tu victoria en la cruz, Señor, porque moriste resucitaste y venciste a la muerte Jehová, te damos gracias Espíritu Santo porque gracias a ti y por medio de ti Padre somos más que vencedores Jehová te damos gracias Espíritu Santo Señor porque podemos ser llamados hijos tuyos, podemos ser llamados escogidos Señor Padre te damos gracias Señor porque con tu amor perfecto Padre, tú nos limpias tu amor perfecto nos purifica Señor y tu palabra toma el efecto por el cual fue enviada Señor, te glorificamos y te bendecimos en el nombre poderoso de Jesús, Amén Thank you, Lord. Lord we thank you Lord for the body that was broken on the cross oh God for us, we thank you oh God because this is the bread of life you are the bread of life oh God and we thank you oh God Lord you said if we come to you we will not hunger and if we believe we will not thirst again so we thank you oh God because it's because of your sacrifice on Calvary, oh God, that we have forgiveness of sin, Lord. So we thank you for your body in Jesus' name. So partake of the bread. for the blood of the new covenant, oh God. 
the everlasting covenant that we have with you. We thank you, O oh God, because it's by your blood, O oh God, not by the blood of bulls and goats, not by the blood of pigeons, O oh God, but by the blood of the Lord, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. We thank you for it. We thank you for the blood in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for your word. We thank you, O oh God, for your sacrifice. We thank you, Lord, for your salvation, O oh God. Lord, today, O oh God, as we leave this place, O oh God, we ask, O oh God, that you would be with us wherever we go, O oh God, with our families, with our friends, O oh God. Lord, we are in the world, but not of the world. So help us, O oh God, to be a light in the world. In the name of Jesus, O oh God. So we pray, O oh God, that we will be a light to those, O oh God, who are in the darkness, O oh God, so that we can bring those who are in darkness into your marvelous light, Lord. And so we thank you, Lord, for your blood. We thank you, O oh God, for the body of Christ that was broken for us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Today, O oh God, as we again depart here, be with us wherever we go in Jesus' name. Bless your people, and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Greet somebody in the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise God.